an old lady. Do you see? Over there between the tea bags and the biscuits, staring at the buy one, get one freeze. I expect you hardly gave her a second glance. Why should you? You'd rather not think too much about people like her, their meal for one, single portion existence. You'd rather get on with choosing a good bottle of red. Go on. Look again. Try to picture her life. Does she have friends? Family? How would you know? But you do. You know someone just like her, living next door, down the street, at the end of the phone when she calls to hear what the grandkids are up to. Besides, one day it might be you standing there, invisible, choosing bourbons over custard creams. Take a good look. What are you frightened of? What do you think, Mum? Nathaniel won't like it. Oh, what a cosy room, Emily. He won't like it at all. She's welcome to add any bits and bobs from home. Well, we can fetch some things over when we visit, can't we, David? Nathaniel will wonder where I am. And such a lovely view of the gardens. We encourage all our residents to get outside when they can, weather permitting. I'm sure you'll fit right in, Emily. It's just that I'm naturally concerned about Nathaniel. Is Nathaniel a relation? Oh, <laughs> He'll be terribly worried, you see. David's mother, she thinks... What Andrea's that... trying to say is that Mum thinks, well, she imagines... She thinks someone called Nathaniel comes to tea. That's right. Every weekday afternoon. And he doesn't, I take it. He's, well, he's an imaginary friend, I suppose. Nonsense. A figment. Which is one of the reasons we decided. He'll be expecting his tea. Hush now, Mum. He won't like it. He won't like it one bit. We prefer to call them fancies. Uh, it's quite common. Often it's someone from their past, but someone locked away in their memory. Nathaniel will want his tea. One of our ladies believes her dad delivers the morning papers. He'll be upset. It's all right, Emily. There's absolutely nothing for you to worry about. You'll be fine, Mum. Nathaniel will know where to find you. Don't you worry, Emily. Nathaniel will know exactly where you are. It was horrible, Andrea. We agreed. I know, but we actually... We agreed it was for the best. Mum's used to being in her own home. It was only a matter of time, David. She's lived in her house all her life. She could have left the gas on. Fallen over, hurt herself. And it's not like we can look after her. No. <laughs> Come on, let's get inside. Are you still sure about this, Andrew? Well, it's either here or some dreadful B and B. It just doesn't seem right somehow when Mum's. If your mother to... were capable of understanding, she'd be the first to suggest it. It's just standing here, empty. She wouldn't want us on the streets. No. And it's going to be yours one day anyway. <laughs> now, can we get inside, please? Uh, Andrew, before we... Um, I, I, I do appreciate mm. how difficult this has been for you, losing the business and for everything Richard, that's gone. With... for poor... Uh, remember? No. Grab the cases, will you? Well, we'll have to decorate. Drag it into the 21st century. Well, I could certainly do with a lick of paint. <laughs> You'd think this place had been shut up for weeks. I'll let in some air. And new carpets wouldn't go amiss. But they probably just need a good clean. I think they're a bit beyond that. Well, how are those um, carpet shampooing things? Mm. Turning room window stuck fast. What the? David? What is it? Blimey! For Nathaniel's benefit, I presume. Set for two. Gave him quite a shock. Let's hope he likes curled up sandwiches. I didn't think anyone actually still made rock cakes. Well, there must be enough here to feed an army. Oh, poor Mum. Mm, Nathaniel's honoured. She always insisted on dragging these out whenever we visited. Well, they were her mother's wedding present, I think. You know, this room isn't so bad. 
A fresh colour scheme, a new dining table and chairs. Well, I did promise I'd decorate, brighten it up for her. Well, you had other things on your mind. Oh, still, it wouldn't have hurt. No, it's not your fault, David. I mean, maybe if she'd seen more of She's me... She's got dementia. Well, not strictly. So she failed, passed some stupid test, but who in their right mind has imaginary friends for tea? Oh, poor Mum. And it's not only Nathaniel. When I think back, she's not really been all there since your dad. Not really. Mm, what a shock, I suppose. So it wouldn't have mattered how often, how many times a year you saw her. You pass me that plate, will you? What? It's been used. So? And this one. <laughs> she must have sat here every afternoon playing teapot. It's not funny, Andrea. Chatting away to her imaginary friend, feeding him tea and cake. Please don't. <laughs> If there was ever any doubt about putting your mother in a home, David, this is precisely why we've done the right thing. Ah, oh, it's lovely to have finally escaped. Phone calls, constantly dreading what the post will bring. Oh, unfortunately, bad debts have the habit of catching up with one. <laughs> At least let me pretend. And all I'm saying is that they'll cotton on eventually and bound to. Let me enjoy the illusion, David. Well, there's really no point in looking at the property pages. Force of habit. What do you reckon this place is worth? Detached. Good neighbourhood. Well, these Edwardian villas are always popular. Why do you ask? Just curious. Well, a fortune, I expect. Big old place like this. Do you know, my grandparents even had a live-in housekeeper. And a nanny, and a nursery when Mum was small. How the mighty have fallen. I'm sorry, Andrea. Actually, I think things are looking up. Once we've stamped our personality, got rid of all her dreary old stuff... Uh, I meant to ask, what have you done with her tea set? It's in a box out by the dustbin. I wondered if I should take it over when I go and visit. No, I don't think that's a good idea, do you? Why not? We should let her settle in first, seeing you will only confuse her more. Do you think? Yeah, and it'll upset you seeing her upset. Just give it a while. Well, perhaps I will. Any plans for today? Well, I thought I'd um, pop down to the DIY store, buy some paint. I'm up here, David. Thought I'd make a start on the bedroom. Bit of a hiccup with the paint, I'm afraid. Sales assistant cut up my card. What? I think it's time we accept, Andrea. No. We'll have to bite the bullet sooner or later. No, everyone will find out. We can't exist without cash, love. We'll apply for another car. Well, who'll give us one? We'll never be allowed to trade again. We'll have no access to credit, not ever. But we'll be free. It'll be in the paper. Bankrupt. Everyone will see. I don't think I can bear it. Not so soon after losing the house. Hello? Did you... Someone's downstairs. You don't think... No, it, it can't be. They can't have found us that quickly. Can they? Hello? Hello? You must be David. What's going on? And the lovely Andrew. He was sitting at the table. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Can we help? I felt it was my duty to welcome you both. And you are? To pay my respects. Well, you know the drill. And, and you got in here by... The front door was wide open. No, it wasn't. I did call out. We were upstairs. I'm so terribly sorry. I'm obviously intruding. Perhaps I should come back. Well, uh, another time would be... Of course. Yeah. No need to explain. I'll call back when it's more convenient. I'd never want to be accused of outstaying my welcome. Well, it's been a real pleasure to finally meet you both. Um... Yes. Until next time, David, Andrew. <clears throat> Who on earth was... One of your mother's butty neighbours. Oh, butty is the word. Did you see that suit? <laughs> Positively funereal. Well, at least it wasn't a debt collector wielding another county court judgment. <sighs> Found it? 
yeah. Let's have a look. I will think of it as a loan, David, to see us through. Well, it's one thing to pay the nursing home fees out of her account, Your but... mum wouldn't have set up power of attorney if she didn't expect you to. Well, that was so I could take control of things in an emergency. And this isn't. Look, Emily doesn't need the money, does she? Not at her age. She's got everything she wants in that place. You've made sure of that. Well, it's her savings. Dad worked all his life. It's so... a loan, a short-term loan to get people off our backs. Oh, I don't know. Ask her if it makes you feel better. I know exactly what she'll say. Yeah? Then we'll pay it back. Of course. Every penny. Oh! <laughs> What's all this? A celebration. To new beginnings. I see you've been shopping. Ah, oh, just a few bits and pieces to brighten the place up. I was thinking about the decorating. Uh, maybe we should get someone in. That money is to pay off our debts. Oh, it's only a cheap bottle of car for David. Come on. To us. <laughs> Hello? What? what the champagne? How lovely. What the hell are you doing? I'm sorry, am I early? Early? I do hope I'm not being a use. I, I think there must be some confusion here. Oh, I would so hate to be the cause of any consternation. Yeah, perhaps if you could explain exactly Emily's who... Emily's usually expecting me. Emily, look, you ought to know that my mother's not here. Oh, I realise that. Then? I'm so sorry. How terribly rude. I didn't get the chance to introduce myself properly yesterday. I'm Nathaniel. You're... <laughs> who? Nathaniel. You're Nathaniel? Emily must have mentioned me. Did someone at the nursing home put you up to this? I'm sure Emily explained. About our arrangement? Your what? Every weekday afternoon, tea and cakes. Around three-ish. Look, I don't know what your game is, Meg. Game? But... Oh, no, there's nothing like that, David. Everything's completely above board. Confusing a helpless old lady? I wouldn't describe Emily as being particularly confused. Alarming her? Emily is a dear, dear friend. Has been for years. I'd like you to leave now, please. Surely. I'd like you to go. But my tea. Please. Now, please. All I'm asking, David, is for a cup of tea and a slice of cake, perhaps. Look, I've had just about enough of this. I'd like you to go. I can't, I'm afraid. But we'll ring the police if we have I'm to. I'm trying to be reasonable. Have you escorted from the premises? I'm sure we can resolve this as gentlemen, David. All I'm asking is a cup of tea. Here, David, on mobile. Here's your last chance. I'll ring them. I will. Earl Grey would be lovely. Police, please. Pop the kettle on while we're waiting, Andrew. But he was here. Sitting at the dining table? Yes. And you say he threatened you? Well, not threatened, exactly. He demanded, well, tea, actually. Tea? Well, he's obviously a complete nutter on day release from some unit. And all the time we thought Mum was the one who well, was... Well, how are we supposed to know? And you don't know who this gentleman is? He's called Nathaniel. So you do know him? David's mother... He's a friend of your mother? No, well... <sighs> Yes, in a way. There's no sign of him now, Mr. Green. But he was here, officer. We'll certainly drive around, see if we can spot anyone matching his description. But uh, my advice, Mr. Green, would be to keep your front door locked in future. Good afternoon. I still don't get it. The dining room window. No, it's stuck. Then it must be unstuck. I've checked. All I know is that he just didn't disappear into thin air. David? Andrew? No. I don't believe it. Sorry, I don't mean to be a pain. Only I have been waiting. Waiting? In the dining room. I was worried you must have forgotten. My tea. Your tea. I'll wait downstairs at the table, shall I? What are we going to do? I'll ring the police again. You make us tea, I suppose. So you gave this Nathaniel tea? I thought... Well, yes, yes, I did. You gave the gentleman tea and then he left? Disappeared. Disappeared? Well, one minute he was here, he the next... He disappeared? Oh. Yes. Well, look, I don't know how exactly, but... Perhaps you could think twice before calling us again, Mr Green. We do have more serious incidents to deal with than neighbours dropping in for tea, uninvited or otherwise. Good afternoon. I've had enough of this. Where are you going? Where do you think? 
Emily's in the day room. She will be pleased to see you both. And how's Mum been getting on? Well, she's taken to it like a duck to water. She has? She's brightened this place up no end. Oh. She's fast become one of our favourite residents. Always has a smile. Really? Such a charming lady. Everyone here loves Emily. And has there been any mention of Nathaniel? I don't think he's been for tea yet, if that's what you mean. There she is, over by the window. But you know who he is. This really isn't helping, Mum. He's Nathaniel. And who is Nathaniel? You know who no. he is. What David means, Emily, is who is he exactly? I said he wouldn't like Mom, it. Mum, please concentrate. I said he'd worry if I wasn't there. This isn't going to work, David. He expects his tea just so, the way he always has. Mum, please. You want to be careful, you know, both of you. Who is Nathaniel? You don't want to make him upset. Mum, who is Nathaniel? He's an angel, of course. Nathaniel is an angel. What if she's right? Oh, don't be so bloody ridiculous. Well, he can disappear at will. But there must be a logical explanation. Maybe he is an angel. He's as real as you are. Well, isn't he? Yes. It's flesh and blood, and not a sociopath. A con man. Yeah. He's probably been taking advantage for years, filling Mum's head with nonsense about angels. Then why still stick around now? What if he's been nosing about? We might have a key. I'll change the locks. This one's a savings account. Ah, oh, yes, we need to transfer 500 for the decorators. What? It's an investment, David. Every penny we spend getting this place up to scratch only increases its value. We might as well get it done properly. But we're not intending to sell. No, not until the market improves, certainly. Better make it a thousand. Afternoon, Bo. Yeah. How did David, you... Andrea. Lovely to see you again. Not too early, I hope. How did you get in? The front door was open. I did knock. Oh. Helping Emily with her paperwork. It's so difficult to know where to invest one's nest egg these days. It really is none of your business. What do you want, Nathaniel? My tea, of course. Money? <laughs> Talk of money so vulgar, don't you think? So last century. Now, you must want something. I only come here for one thing, Andrea. Chuck him out. I certainly don't want to be the cause of any... Go on, David! Come on, you out! Do take care of the suit, David. They don't make them like this anymore. Get out! And out of my house! As I've explained, Mr Green, we really don't want to pursue matters. But if we have to... Thanks for nothing. They accuse me of wasting police time. So they could prosecute... It's never going to end, is it? If we could just work out how he gets through in. Through the front door. He gets in through the front door. But how? Oh, he picks the lock. I don't know. Well, that still doesn't explain how he disappears. I don't know, David. All I do know is that he's here every afternoon, sitting at that table, demanding his tea. So what do you suggest? I can't take any more of this, David. Every slight noise, I think it's Nathaniel. Every creak of the floorboard, I think it's Nathaniel. Every gust of wind, I think it's Nathaniel. I can't think, I can't sleep, I can't eat. Then let's move out. Afternoon. You see what I mean? Hmm. Quite delicious. <laughs> you really are improving, Andrea. Some more tea. Thank you. You've never mentioned Nathaniel. Are you married? Oh, goodness, no. Any family? No, I've always considered Emily to be family. And you and David, of course. But you do live around here. Not far. I imagine you must have plenty of friends. A drop more milk, perhaps? <laughs> Perfect. What do you want, Nathaniel? <laughs> but why on earth should I want anything, apart from your charming company? We're not leaving. Who said anything about leaving? Why, I should be heartbroken at the very idea. There's nothing here for you. <laughs> That's where you're wrong. You see... You're here, my dear Andrea. You are. And as long as you are, then so am I. Where are you going? I can't sleep. Take a tablet. Ah. Oh. Take another. You're trying to kill me. You should go back to your GP, get something stronger. 
not my tablets are the problem. If you are half a man, stand up to him. What else am I supposed to do, huh? I throw him out, he comes back. I change the locks, he comes back. You're in the police. You can't just let him walk all over us. Well, every attempt to find out who he is has failed. It's like the man doesn't even exist. That's it. David. That's it. I'm sorry, Andrea. I think you've gone out of your tiny mind. You said yourself it was like he doesn't exist. He's another human being. He's scum, David. Oh, this is ridiculous. You can't really intend Nathaniel to... Nathaniel is never going to leave, David. This could go on for years. I'm sorry, but no. How many other people do you think he's preyed on? We'll be doing the world a favour. No one will miss him. How do you know that? Someone might. He doesn't have family, friends, no one can trace him here. He doesn't exist, remember? That's still no reason. This house, David... This house is our last chance. You know how sorry I am about the business. I'll stop Andrea, by you even when we lost everything. Lots of wives wouldn't. But now you're going to let him, Nathaniel, walk all over you. You're going to throw everything away again. But doing that, Andrea... You simply grind them up, add them to his tea. What if he tastes them? That sounds too strong. It's like drinking a bonfire. It won't taste a thing. They might not work. Then, when he's drowsy and disorientated, we'll whack him with this. Where did you find that? Toolbox under the stairs. You just give him a great big whack on the back of his head. Me? Well, he won't feel it. No, no, how can you possibly whack know? Him twice. No, I, I, I couldn't. Then I'm sorry, David. I don't see how we can carry on. Oh, we'd still have to dispose of the body. We'll dump it somewhere secluded. Reservoir, perhaps. No, I, I don't know, and Andrea. How long do you think he was terrorising your mother? Afternoon. This is your chance, David. You decide. Another cup, Nathaniel? So thoughtful, Andrea. One of my favourite blends, as you can tell. <laughs> what is this, my second cup? Third. It's so refreshing. It makes you feel quite alive. David not around this afternoon. He should be here any minute. David! Good. I have so hated to miss saying goodbye. David. Andrea. Nathaniel's here. Can we talk? David, how lovely to see you. We're doing some DIY, are we? I am ready, by the way, David. Now, David. Now! I'm sorry, Andrea. I should do as she says. Now! David. I can't! Hit him! I can't! For goodness sake, get her here! No, Andrea! No! That went off pretty smoothly. So much blood. Worked out perfectly. I saw his brain. A man's living brain. We were replacing that carpet anyway. Please don't, Andrea. The reservoir's next on the left. What if someone sees us? At this time of night, we simply back the car up to the edge, lift him out and roll him in. He'll take seconds. What if he floats? That old carpet weighs a ton. There. Follow the signs for the picnic area. Hold the torch. I'll grab his feet. On the count of three. One, two, three. Burn. Right. You better get rid of the hammer. Well, go on, chuck it in. Now, roll him to the edge. Go on, David. What was that? The body expelling yeah, it's, it's completely natural. Is it? Now, slide him in. Go on, David. I must be stuck on something. Shine the torch. His arms have come out of the carpet. Shut them back in. They've got all stiff and... Clam in. What? Oh. His hand moved. Spasm. Rigor mortis, that's all. Come on, hurry up. Oh, my goodness sake, Andrew, I'm doing the best I can. Stab his arm if you have to. Oh, get him off me. Get him off me. He's got me. 
Under considerable financial pressure, it says. And she was on tablets from the doctor. Andrea always was highly strong. The court was told that David and Andrea Green were under the delusion that they were being persecuted by some unknown person. Oh dear, oh dear. Despite numerous visits to their home by police officers, no such person was ever identified. It was to be expected, I'm afraid. Double suicide by drowning, whilst the balance of their minds was impaired. I'm so sorry, Emily. I fear it was quite inevitable, given the circumstances. And you're sure about returning home? Not that I'm ungrateful for my time here, my dear, but it was never meant to be permanent. Well, the doctor feels you're quite capable... And I expect there's a lot to sort out. There usually is after someone... Oh, yes. There's always plenty to do. Fruitcake. A choice of sandwiches. Gentleman's relish, of course. And the best Darjeeling to wash it down. Well, I should hope I know what you like by now, Nathaniel. We've been friends a long time, Emily. It's so nice to finally be back where we belong. A sandwich to begin. Lovely. And a piece of sponge cake. My favourite. Since our days upstairs in the nursery. No one believed us then. I think Andrea and David came around to our way of thinking. And some tea, of course. Of course. <laughs> It's all splendid, Emily. Absolutely splendid. I simply couldn't ask for anything more. Why, it's my pleasure, Nathaniel. A toast to old friends. To old friends. A little girl in her nursery playing tea parties with her imaginary friends. A fancy of a confused old lady. Both figments, of course, because angels don't exist, do they? She's at the checkout now, our old lady. Is she? Talking to herself. Poor dear, losing your faculties like that. Just one of the many indignities of old age. Ah, I see you've picked a Merlot. A good choice. Anyhow, I mustn't keep you any longer. Time flies. You get on. In Angels in Disguise by Nicola Jones, Andrea was played by Rachel Atkins, David by Stephen Hogan, Nathaniel by Piers Wayner, and Emily by Oriel Smith. Jenny was played by Tessa Nicholson, and the police officer by Philip Fox. Mark Gatiss was the man in black. Angels in Disguise was directed by Peter Leslie Wilde.